Welcome back to another episode of my trading vlog, where 80% of my views come from returning subscribers. If that's you, hit the like button. If it's not, consider subscribing. Remember, analyze, make a plan, follow the plan, no fear, no doubt. And lately, there's been a lot of fear in the markets, and me as a bear, I've been saying, hey, I'm actually expecting a bounce, whether you're bullish or bearish, SPY falling that hard. It's a vertical run down. There's an 81% chance that we get a median retrace, 46% chance that I actually retrace all the way and continue higher. And we could be grinding sideways for a very long time at this point. I've been talking about that for a while. I am somehow not super bearish right now everybody else is let's talk about the one minute chart here spy i said i was looking for a bottom of the discord sure enough we got it whether or not you consider this to be a double bottom or an inverted head and shoulder pattern we certainly would not see the inverted head and shoulder pattern until the double bottom form the target was reached at 398 38915 a retracement down to 386 constitutes a wave two or b in a flat formation the third wave targets much higher at 395 so we could see some more upside moving into tomorrow before finishing a five wave move ending that vertical run down into a bigger double bottom or a bottoming pattern or CPI data comes out and it's better than expected or at least it's you know so so and the markets can rally on that news for now, on SPY, I really am not feeling super bearish. I didn't trade it. I know it's getting really frustrated to trade. Let's go to AMC and GME next. I'm going to try to make this a quick video. We did have a rally and then a dump, and now sideways grind. This isn't the worst thing ever. Honestly, AMC could be doing a lot worse. If we were to have a full measured move down, whoa. <laughs> what did my charts just do? If we were to have a full measured move down, brace, is it, is it going to work? Okay, it's going to work. Sometimes you don't know. You hit the you hit the button and it just goes crazy. If we're going to have a full measure move down, I'm looking for that 455 level. There's support there as well. It's looking like we might be finding ourselves in a diamond or a bear flag, and we could find that last little push coming to test that uptrend. For the time being, that does not necessarily have to be the case. I look at the charts, and it's not as bearish as people might think it is. The downtrend has broken from that last high. Whether or not we get an extension heading lower will be determined if we can find a low below that 530 level. I would call bullish reversal probably near that $6 mark, and we could find ourselves suddenly in a bottoming pattern. We had a head and shoulder top, and then we're going to have a head and shoulder bottom, then we'll have a head and shoulder top again. We'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's what happened towards uh, the middle of 2021. I remember distinctly I was forecasting all of these bottom and topping patterns consecutively and it looks like we might be going through that here on AMC for a sideways grind let's go look at GameStop I was hoping to see a bounce but of course more dump <laughs> just it just continues to fall and we're finding some support at that 1680 1689 level this is should be the end the fifth wave of this downtrend we should start to see a reversal occur soon and again it just really depends on cpi data the whole market's going to respond to it all eyes on cpi no doubt about it i'm just it's just a it's all anyone's been watching for the last forever let's look at the dollar really quickly too the dollar took a dip a big dip a big dive i was expecting it to do so finding support near that 103 level that kind of constitutes a fantastic place to find a second wave after a push higher. I was following a leading diagonal triangle through here in yellow and just seeing the price find a new high and reversing makes sense. It does. We are currently perhaps in some sort of expanding flat pattern where we have a low, a new high, and then a lower low. It's a broadening price action. There is a potential here that the dollar continues to push down to find another low near 101 to form some sort of double bottom overall i am pretty bullish on dollar strength with rates rising but now we're starting to see rates reverse let's go to tnx this is the 10-year treasury yield i've been talking about a double bottom through here and you can see now that the rates are falling we'll be forming a triple bottom if we can get above the valley the last high at 41 ish that's not necessarily going to happen. We could see rates drop. We could see the dollar drop. After all, I'm very bullish on gold and silver. SLV and GLD are not commodities. They are equities, but they follow the precious metals. It's important to remember that. I'm currently holding a couple of calls here in SLV. I decided to hold them on the basis that I believe we are actually in a flag. I'm early because I entered the position before the price broke up above the flagpole, but 
I'm just going to hold on for dear life and try to reach the target at 2074, which would be the beginning of this descending broadening wedge shown in white. The downtrend has broken. We are beginning our reversal through here, I believe, on a larger time frame that we're going to be finding ourselves in new highs in short order. Let me just zoom over here. Scooch this chart over. You're going to see there's a big head and shoulder bottom at 1650 back here as the price rose into $17.19. I said there was an opportunity. If you bought that, that's great. That's fantastic. Price reversed and then headed higher. I had to flip bearish as price passed below $20. And I've been saying ever since it's a buying opportunity. And well, guess what I did? I'm buying calls now. I'm going to try to play this reversal. I think this could be the beginning of a third wave heading higher. And we'll see that extension at the intermediate Elliott wave degree. GLD is going to be next very quickly. GLD making a push higher and this is starting to have some semblance of an inverted head and shoulders, isn't it? Our shoulder heights are totally wrong and the symmetry is all messed up, so I wouldn't call it that. Let me scooch it over a little bit more for you. It's possible that we could be forming a larger triangle pattern or a broadening pattern. We're going to have to wait until we can really figure that out, but like SLV, I expect GLD to be pushing up much, much, much higher as dollar strength falls, as bond yields drop, as... Well, the markets start to go into these divergent patterns I've been talking about for a long time now. Let's go check on Tesla while we're here. Tesla, I was expecting to uh, perhaps find a little more downside and then turn up. We do have support at 174. That's a 61.8% retracement level. This is where we would expect wave two to end. I think this might be upside down. Wave two could drop more. I think if I'm going to be measuring the height in that way, really what I want to do is use the 0.382. This is as far as the wave the wave two could really fall. This is a good spot for it to stop. We have what's called an ascending scallop through here because it looks kind of like a scallop, all these ridges here in this kind of curved pattern. The pattern confirms once we find a new high and we are not there. Nope, but 214 seems to be that bull continuation pattern. I'm still looking for another wave higher. I really am. I, I am not so bearish right now. I'm really not. The RSI hasn't reached oversold, so it's possible that we continue to dump until we reach that level. Implied volatility at this range is beginning to pick up. The price is ticking up with implied volatility, so it's very possible that we are in now a new motive wave, and we will get that fifth wave pushing higher. Let's go look at Apple as well. I'm just going to zoom in here. Here we go. I've been looking for a partial decline. I'm going to go into an hourly time frame, actually. This will look better there. There's a right angle descending broadening formation shown in white. And yes, this chart's very cluttered. So I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. Maybe I uh, shrink down my indicators. This is probably not a flag anymore, but we did get a nice bounce off that bearish reversal confirmation level. Finding that level as support is bullish, and I would not be too eager to enter into a short or a put position here. It does look like we have the first half of a bottoming pattern beginning to form, which follows the idea of a partial decline very well. We'll get bullish extension confirmation at 155.73. We're not there yet, but if CPI data comes in good, we could be there in short order. Going over to VIX. Yeah, VIX spiked big time, and now we're finding ourselves in some sort of pennant or flag formation. This is the probably ending of a motive wave higher. I want to zoom in on this a little bit more. Maybe I can scrutinize it, find ourselves in some sort of narrowing pattern. It's possible. This is waves one, two, three, four, and five under throwing this lower trend line. And then we get a push higher. That could, that could occur. This could also be a top. Of, it really could be. We're going to have to wait and find out, though. There's there's a lot going on. The markets are all over the place. And mostly, I feel like it's emotion and news and opinion that is pushing everything around. Less reality, less valuations, less whatever. Playboy did a great job today. I was really happy to be holding Playboy. I'm going to put, put a candle chart uh, here on the daily time frame. My account balance is basically tied to Playboy at this point. It's like what I'm trading. And today, we had a big fat green. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice. Hell, yeah. Look at these dojis. Actual dojis in the price. Pretty rare. And pushing past $2 is very, very bullish in my opinion. Earnings are coming up Thursday, I believe. I'm holding calls. I'm holding shares. And I did sell a call against 100 of those shares. What's super annoying is that as that call value increases, even though I'm holding premium and even though the strike of the call that I sold is above the cost basis for the shares, Thinkorswim still holds the value to close that call against my profit and loss if that the value of that option is above where I sold it, which it currently is. 
and it's out of the money. So I, there's an out of the money call, call I sold. It's appreciating a value as time goes on, which to me is like, whoa, okay, so something here is probably cooking up for a big bullish run. Anyway, it's just annoying that it affects my profit, my, my P&L negatively for now. I don't really intend to close the position. I just wanted to hedge my, my, my shares and then also use some of that premium to increase my exposure in the short term by buying more near term expiration calls, which I have done for April and for Friday of this week. I am speculating that we're going to get some really good data about uh, the sales in China specifically and the paying down of senior debt and Playboy. So I'm waiting for more fundamental data to come out. I'm speculating that's going to be good and that will push Playboy higher. It, Playboy is not responding to market conditions at all. I love it. It's a completely uncluttered position. I don't really want to be trading SPY while everyone's like left, right, left, right, up is down and down is up. This doesn't interest me at all. That's all for today. Let me know if you like to have the, the camera on or not. For me, it's easier to have it off, to be honest. But you let me know in the comments. And if you like the content, remember, like, subscribe, do whatever you want. I'm out of here.